All right, we're recording. So with that said, um, now that I know we're recording, I will post the video up on the YouTube channel for Crooked Door Studio. I need to share that YouTube channel on Crooked Door Studio Facebook and Instagram so everybody knows it's there. We've got over 100 followers, which is awesome. With that said, know that if tonight's not your night to paint, that's okay. Don't let it frustrate you. Put your brushes down, clean up your mess, walk away know that you can come back to the video later. Um, art should be, should be freeing and relaxing. And if you're starting to stress about something, you need to take a breath and walk away. I have that happen sometimes. Sometimes it's just not my night and that's all right. So know that the recording will be there. I'm not even gonna say when it'll be there because if you've heard me talk about it before, I live in the country, I have random rural internet. So whenever my internet cooperates, that's when I'll get it posted, hopefully tomorrow, we'll see. Okay, so anyway, I'm Shauna Sue. I see we have some new faces on here tonight, and then we have some of my trusty regulars. I'm happy to see all you guys here. Um, I posted in the Zoom chat on um, Zoom. It's going to be a night. I can, I can tell already. I posted in the Zoom chat feature a list of supplies that you need for the night and uh, where you can donate to the studio. They're not links, you just copy and paste them so you have them. But I do wanna say thank you to everyone that's donated to the studio. Y'all are helping keep me open, closed, open. Y'all are helping reserve my studio space in the Uptown in Marysville so I'll be able to go back to it, we'll be able to reopen it someday. So still making rent and that's all that matters. So it'll be there when all this settles down. So thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Okay. So before we get started, let's do our inventory. We would do this if we were at the studio. I always want to make sure I have everything I need before I get started. So first things first, um, let's talk about supplies. If you need supplies, I have them at the studio. I know a lot of you do that. You just private message me. You let me know what you need. I will put stuff in the supply cabinet in the back. I'll give you the code. You can go 24 seven and pick up what you need. And the supplies at the studio aren't gonna cost you any more than if you go to a craft store and get your own supplies. And I give you just what you need for, for class. For those of you that are waiting on fan brushes, I got notification that they shipped. I have a box of fan brushes coming, hopefully early next week, fingers crossed. So if you need a fan brush, uh, let me know. I've, I'm keeping a running list. Anyway, okay, supplies, um, apron. Make sure you have an apron or a paint shirt. The paint that I'm using is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble. If you get it on your clothes and it dries, it's a bear to get out. So um, make sure you have something on that you're not really that concerned about. If you have sleeves, which somebody mentioned earlier, it's feeling very fallish. If you have sleeves, push those up, get them out the way. If you have a nice shirt on and you don't have a backup, um, run to the bathroom real quick, flip your shirt inside out. Um, I will do that sometimes if I don't wanna get paint on my, on my shirt. And I can always have the best of intentions and still wind up with paint on my shirt. Happens. Um, so anyway, paint shirt, apron. Got our inspiration painting here for tonight, our inspiration picture. I'm gonna set that to the side. We'll talk about it in a minute. Move my sign out the way. So I have a uh, 16 by 20 stretched canvas. I love a stretched canvas because you can paint it, you can paint the sides of it, and then it's done. You don't have to frame it, you don't have to do anything else with it, it's finished. You can frame it if you want, but you don't have to. So as you go, I'm gonna try and remind you, we're gonna paint the whole background first. I'm gonna try to remind you to paint your edges. So get the top, get the sides. It's so much easier to paint the edges as you go than it is to try to match them up later. So I'll try to remind you to paint those edges. So canvas, think about two. We'll talk about this again in a minute. Our inspiration picture. Think about, I love that. You're doing a small painting today. That's awesome. Um, think about two. Are you going vertical? Or are you gonna flip your painting landscape? I think this works well either way. Ponder it, okay? But you're gonna to wanna to decide that early on before we put brush to canvas, okay? So, um, canvas. Uh, I have a cup of uh, water. It's only halfway full. You don't need to fill it all the way. Um, cool or cold, never hot. 
never warm or hot. And I like something that's a little heavier, an old coffee cup, or um, I like to use a mason jar. This is what we use at the studio. I'm less likely to knock it over than if it's a, like a solo cup. So there's that. And because it's a cup, I should probably mention this, because it's a cup I use all the time, I'm less likely to pick it up and put it to my mouth and drink out of it. You'd be surprised, these things happen, but it's got paint all over it, so I'm probably gonna catch it before I get it to my face. Um, another way that will keep me from drinking out of it, let's talk about brushes. When I'm not using my brushes, they're gonna live in that cup, okay? Um, they're gonna live in there just while we're using them tonight. I'm not gonna leave them in there a long time because they'll start to get deformed. Um, but I want to keep them in there while I'm using them so they don't dry out until I have the time to go and clean them properly when I'm done painting. So for tonight, I have my big background brush, my big oval wash brush. I have a medium-ish filbert brush, and he's a filbert because he's curved. He's skinny this way, but he's curved on the end. He's not flat. Whatever you have is what we'll use. And then I have a nice, um, a nice round pointy brush that I can use for those branches. Branches and a little bit of the, uh, the water marks in the bottom. So again, while I'm not using these, they live in the water cup. I have a couple paper towels underneath my water cup to blot my brushes off on. And then I always have a paint pen. It's optional, you don't have to have it, but I always keep it just for signing my paintings when I'm done because I'm really bad at signing with a brush. So I love to have a paint pen just in case. Let's talk about our paint colors tonight. Don't judge my palette, it's kind of a hot mess. My brown got a little out of control, but it's gonna be a mess here in a second anyway. Um, so I have white and black and a fly, let him go. I have white and black, and then I have brown. Uh, you may either have raw umber or burnt umber, but one of the umbers is lovely for the tree branches. And then red, yellow, and orange. We always have conversations about the red. Um, red can be very tricky, depending on what we're trying to do with it. Whatever red you have tonight, fly. Whatever red you have, he's gonna make me crazy tonight. He just wants to paint, evidently. Whatever red you have is fine. Uh, for tonight, we talk about red leaning blue or leaning orange. Doesn't matter tonight. Whatever red you have is fine. Okay, the thing too, and we'll talk about this when we get closer to the leaves. You want a red because it's darker. We'll put that on for the leaves first, and then we'll work our way lighter for highlights. So then we'll go into orange and then we'll go into yellow. So if this red leans whatever way it leans, it's going to be fine because it's red. We'll mix it with orange. That was a lot more than you needed to know, but know that whatever colors you have tonight will be fine. Okay, I think, I think that's everything. Let's talk really quickly. I always like to give you a, a, like a map of the landscape so you know where we're going. So this is our, our painting that we have for the evening. This is our inspiration. So sky, we're gonna paint the background sky. And about two thirds of the way down, it's gonna just transition real easily into water. There's no strong, um, horizon line in there where it breaks from sky to water. It just kind of happens seamlessly. So to keep a seamless transition, we know to paint water, our brush strokes need to be parallel to the bottom of the canvas. They need to be side to side. That's how we know it's water. That's how our brain tells us it's water. If our brush strokes start to move too much up and down, it doesn't look like water anymore. So to keep that seamless transition, as we paint top down, we're gonna paint our sky side to side and work right on into the water side to side at the bottom. So anyway, we'll paint the whole background. We'll get in here and we'll start making some marks in the water so we know where our drips are gonna be. We'll put our branch in there and then we'll start putting our color in there. And our color will work darkest first We'll put the red in there. We might even mix some brown with the red to get it nice and dark. And then we'll start putting orange on top and then those yellow highlights on the very, very top, making sure to get some of that down in the water too. So that's how that's gonna work tonight. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And it's funny, I don't know if it's my printer 
or if it really is this way, but I'm gonna use black and white and a little bit of brown in the sky. Up here, it almost looks like there's a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of red in the sky. That's up to you. If you put red in the sky though, just the tiny, tiniest bit, because it'll take over and turn everything pink real fast. So I think it might just be my printer, what my printer was doing. So I'm gonna stick with black, white, and a little bit of brown. All righty, let's get started. All right, got my palette. So I'm gonna find my biggest brush. And always when I start, I'm gonna tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. I'm gonna soften that guy up a little bit. He might have a little paint residue left over in him from last time. Or if you have new brushes, there's starch in them. It keeps them nice and stiff when they ship them from the factory. You wanna clean all that out of it. So tap, tap, tap in the bottom. And then I'm gonna dry that off. And anytime I take color, I'm always going to go in the edge, never the middle of the puddle. I don't want to mess it all up. So in the edge, I'm going to take a big old chunk of white, a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, not mixing them, right? They're separate on my brush. I'm going to let that happen on the canvas. And I'm going to go side to side. Now the reason I'm not mixing them is because I want to see those different colors on my canvas. If I get nice and close, you can see I've got brown there, a little white over there, a little black over there. Every time I take paint on my brush, it's going to look different. I'm going to get those different shades of, of brown gray. And that's what I want. Maybe next time I take a little black, a little brown, big old chunk of white. Maybe I have more white next time. And our goal again, let's cover that whole canvas. Edges, get your edges. So right away, let's get up there and get that tippy top. And again, it's easier to paint your edges now than it is to try to match them up later. We're gonna go all the way down, okay? If I look at the inspiration painting, it looks like there's a nice, it's whiter in the middle, up to you, right? It's darker up here and it's whiter in the middle. So are you gonna get a little, a little more white in there in the middle section? Up to you. Whatever your rainy sky, your rainy autumn sky looks like in your world. Ah, and this is my reminder to you to breathe. Right? I say this every time. A lot of being an artist is just letting it go, letting whatever happens, happen. We can't control it. We'll have an idea for the way we think it should turn out. But part of being an artist is letting, just letting it happen. And if it's not turning out the way you think it should, it's okay, roll with it. It's the hardest lesson to learn, I think. funny whenever I paint backgrounds and I'm, I'm side to side I don't even know that, that I move my arm a lot I tend to move my body I tend to like dance with the <laughs> move my whole body in there I could just move my arm but I like to get into it Hello, Anita. I see you've joined us. I didn't see you till now. Hello. <laughs> okay. It looks like we've gotten a few more people. So again, our goal is I'm using white, a lot of white, a little brown, a little black, 
side to side and let's cover that whole canvas. And if we look at the inspiration, if you look behind the tree, it's whiter in the middle, but again, that's entirely up to you. All oh, edges, don't forget your edges. Again, easier to match them now than it is to try to match them up later. Easier to paint them now than it is to match them later, I should say. And if you know me at all, you know I'm awful about remembering to paint my edges. So trying to be better every day, trying to be a little better. And I will be right back. I'm gonna go assist, assist my bulldog. Come Hopkin head. Oh. Okay. Mm, I'm already loving this, right? I'm, I'm very much feeling rainy autumn day. I like to point out too, you'll notice as I as I'm painting this, I'm my brush strokes are going all the way right and left. I'm not stopping halfway. I do that because I don't want to see the marks where I pick up my brush and I put it down. So that's why I'm going all the way side to side. So you can't see those those brush strokes, those marks. And again, if you're just now joining us, our goal right now is to cover the whole canvas. Ooh, I got a little dark down there. Is to cover the whole canvas. There's a very subtle transition. You can't even really see it, right? It's not even really there. From sky into water, there's, real, there's no real defined line there. But about two thirds of the way down is where we're going to make that transition into water. Doesn't really matter right now. It will when we start to um, to put the reflection down in the water. But it doesn't matter right now. But what you need to do for your water to make sure it looks like water is to stay parallel to the bottom. You need to stay side to side with your brush stroke.
Everybody breathing, let it all out. Don't hold your breath when you paint. I'll remind you when we get ready to paint the, to paint the tree, I'll remind you to breathe. Because it's really easy to hold your breath when we do something new. So I'll remind you. Okay, all the way down. So let's see, to keep on, on target, how about 7.35, I'll show you the next step. You don't have to worry about your canvas being dry. I don't think there's anything, I may change that, but I don't think there's anything in this canvas that needs to be dry before we move on to the next step. So you've got about nine, nine, 10 minutes. Let's paint that whole canvas and then I'll show you the next, the next step. And I know a lot of you like to rinse your cup out and rinse your brushes out. Not worried about that before the next step. So 7.35. Okay, making sure to get my edges, edges. Okay, got that whole thing covered. I'm gonna take that brush and just pop it in the water cup and leave it there. So once your whole canvas is covered, brush in water cup. And about 7.35, we'll move on and I'll show you the next step. So that's about seven-ish minutes. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, so while we're on a, a while I'm on a little break, I see you guys are still painting your canvases. Again, seven thirty-five. We'll move on. Um, if you're not ready at 7.35, I'll, I'll ask and I'll look over and see who's panicking, who's like, ah, um, and then I'll know if I need to give it another five minutes, but that'll be our plan for now, 7.35. Um, so one of my girlfriends is on here painting, hi, Marie, and she logs on, she rarely paints what we paint, but she just logs on just to be with people and to paint, and she just asked me how to paint fur, so um, if you're done painting and you want to learn how to paint fur, let me let me show you. Stand by.
Okay, so extra, extra lesson here tonight. Let's, let's talk fur. So if you're painting fur on an animal, you have to think about, it's, it's funny, it just occurred to me, somebody probably went to the bathroom and came back and they're like, fur, what? No, no, this is, this is just extra. <clears throat> so if you're painting fur, you have to think about how the fur grows. So let's think about um, the fur on a dog's back. So you would paint the fur at the tail end first, at their butt end first, and work your way up. You have to paint it in the direction that it grows. So if you're petting a dog, you pet them down their back. So you have to start at the end and work your way back up. Because this fur up here overlays this fur that overlays this fur that overlays this fur. So that's how you have to paint them. You have to start down here and work your way up. So if you're painting um, the belly, like the belly of a cat, you have to start at the bottom and work your way up because that's the way you would pet a cat is from their neck down to their belly. If you have a cat that lets you pet their belly, not all of them like that. Um, a brush that you would use for this, you would use a brush that's all like old and kind of splayed out, or you could use a fan brush and this fan brush has seen better days, but I'm not getting rid of it because it's it would be a good fur brush. So the trick is, finding a brush that's all splayed out and then I'm going to use it dry. I'm not going to wet it down. If it is wet down, um, dry it out really good and when you dry it out, like take your paper towel and like really dry it out so it splays back out again. When you load it up with paint, you're going to load, load it by tap, tap, tapping in the paint vertical. So you're just getting paint on the ends. So I just have paint on the ends and my brush is still all splayed out. Let's say cat's belly. So you start down at the bottom and you're gonna paint as long as your cat hair is. If you have um, a long hair cat, you need to make longer brush strokes. So I'm gonna set my brush down and pull, pull, pull. Pull, 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 pull. And then as I go, I'm gonna work my way up the cat belly. So pull, pull, pull. Now that looks like kind of a hot mess, but if you work layer after layer after layer, so I think Marie, for what you're working on, you would do dark first, um, dark gray, and then work lighter lighter gray on top of it so i'm taking brown and a little bit of a little bit of white and going over top so that's the trick is to paint paint it in the direction that it grows start at the bottom first the last place you would pet and work your way up anyway there you go so random but I do love the random. Okay, one minute. Is anybody not gonna be ready to move on to the next step? And it's okay if your canvas is still wet. We all good? All right, cool, cool. So one minute and we'll move on. You're welcome, Marie. One minute and we'll move on. I'm super excited. I need to get my brain wrapped around, um, wrapped around painting animals. I have, well, not painting, but sketching. I have a fundraiser coming up for uh, Canine Companions for Independence for CCI. Hello, Amanda, Amanda and dad. I see you guys on here tonight um, where we're going to talk about sketching animals. Not necessarily painting animals, but sketching animals. And that's something we'll talk about. We'll talk about the fur. We'll talk about how to paint the eyes and the nose. Um, animals are one thing, as long as you get the proportions right, and as long as you get those eyes right, you can really do anything you want, right? You gotta get the eyes, the nose, the nose is kind of important, but those are the, those are the biggies. So anyway, okay, it is 7.35. Let's move on to the next step. And again, I'm okay if this is still wet. So at the 
let's talk again. Two thirds down, two thirds down on my canvas, one third up. That's where it kind of transitions from sky into water. And I have three drips. So I want to put the idea. It is, Lynn, it is open to everyone. It's on, um, I should have said that, right? Because it's a fundraiser for them. So it's on Crooked Door Studio website. It's the only class on there right now. Um, I'll have a couple other virtual fundraisers coming up, but go to crookeddoorstudio.net or just Google Crooked Door Studio and it's on there. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. So about two thirds of the way down, we transition into water. And I want to use the same colors I've been using and put the idea for where those water drips are going to be. I'm going to go back and do more to them later, but I need to put the idea for where they're going to be because we're going to keep going back to them. So if I look at just the bottom third of my canvas, I have a water drip right in the middle of that section. And then one up to the right and one down to the left. They're very diagonal across there. And the thing to remember is they're not circles, they're ovals, like it's kind of an ellipse, right? Wouldn't be a circle because I'm not, unless I'm standing looking straight down at the water drip, then it would be a circle, but I'm not. I'm kind of looking at it from a side view. So it's going to be kind of an ellipse shape. Okay, so I'm going to take that same brush I've been using, that big brush, the same colors I've been using, little white, little black, little brown, and I'm going to find the bottom third of my canvas-ish, and right in the middle of that bottom third section, I'm going to put that first water drip. And again, I'm going to use my big brush and I'm going to use it skinny ways and do some sketching. Okay, so bottom third, right in the middle. And it's going to be really hard to see, but there it is. This is just me getting the idea for where those drips are gonna live. So there's one. And a little white, little, little black, little brown. The same colors I have in the background. And then I'm gonna go down here and do another one. Just round and around and around and around. And then diagonal top right, another one. You can see I'm going to do more to those later to accentuate them. I'll put a little color. I'll get some little, um, some little white highlights. But for now, I just need to know where they're going to live. One more. Right. Something like that. Okay. Now that I have those on there, I know that's about where my water, I guess I'm a little higher than a third. Okay. But that's, I have my sky down to there and then my water on down. So now I'm going to take that and, and pop it in my water cup. And I'll give you a few more minutes to do that, about another five minutes or so. And then we're going to head up to the top. We're going to put our tree branch in. I don't know why I just got weird. We're going to put our tree branch. Got weird. I'm always weird. Got a little weirder. Oh, is everybody breathing? 
Everybody good? Oh, I see Anita. I'll give you a minute, Anita. <laughs> um, yeah, about five minutes. We won't move on for five minutes. Oh, I see some of you are painting outside. <gasps> that makes my heart, heart happy because it's gorgeous outside, right? I love this time of year. Mm. I know we're not done with the hot weather. I know it'll come back, but man, when we start to get into the 60s, oh, that's my jam. Oh my God, there's Bill and Teresa. There you are. I've been missing you. That looks good, dude. Yes. Did you use blue or is it just the light? Looks like there's blue in your sky and I love it. I'm super excited to see where the alien winds up tonight, by the way. <laughs> So about three minutes, about three minutes, we'll move on. And again, your, your canvas doesn't have to be dry. Hi, Tisma. <laughs> okay, no blue. Okay, it must have just been the light. It was looking like there was blue in there. Um, I think that was me projecting onto you because I thought about putting blue in mine. I do that sometimes. <laughs> Are you sure that's not blue? Are you sure there's no blue in there? Okay. So two minutes and we'll move on. Okay. I see Anita still working. I got you, Anita. Let me see. <gasps> yes. That looks good, honey. That looks good what's your dark spot over ah uh, i love it anita it's gonna be good tonight yes awesome Oh yeah, let me uh, let me go in real quick while everybody's catching up and give you the opportunity to unmute yourself if you want for a minute. There we go. Okay, you should be able to unmute yourself. Shana. Hi. Hi. Did you see my picture? I was a bit late in sending it with the flowers and everything. Remember? I did, yeah. So actually, you know what? I like the, how did you find the flowers? Remember, should I bring it? You Wait, know, we did that. that. You know, I put some leaves, out of, I put leaves on my trees. Can I bring my picture and show it? Yeah, yeah, let me see. Trying to remember what last week's painting was. It's not awful. I don't even remember. I don't remember what I had for breakfast, so I guess <laughs> I should be surprised that I don't remember last week's painting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, <laughs> hang on. Let me make you big. That looks lovely, Anita. Thanks. The leaves are, is that a good idea? It is. It is. I love it. Actually, some other, I saw yours and even other people's, they had more red on it. How do you make, put the red on it? Remember? Um, it was the so red in the leaves or the red in the sky? In the sky. Oh, that's hard to do now that you have stuff on top of it. Yeah, yeah, but where, if I want to do again, so what do I do to make it a little bit more red? The, so I think the problem is the blue that we use is so powerful. The blue takes over really fast. So you just have to use less blue and less white. Okay, more red. Yeah, I just more red. The, the blue is so powerful. So you would have to use this much red and this much blue. Okay, and which red do you take? Because... I mean, there are different shades of red. There are different shades of red. It, hang on just a second. Um, so this is the paint that I use. I use uh, Blick, Blick Acrylic. Okay. Is it crimson, bright red, or dull red? Yep, it's um, bright red. Okay, I have that. I'll use that next time. Okay, there's one that's uh, fire red, and I don't like that one near as much. I like the bright red. And today's on too, like yours is more on the blackish. I kept mine more on the brownish side. Is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah. It, this is, if you're using this kind of paint, it's hard to get more brown because the brown is really weak. Okay. It's really transparent. Okay, because I got this, the umbar brown. That's artist oh, block. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Actually, oh. I enjoy painting with you, you know, you're so friendly and all the other people are my friends too, you know. I, we look forward to seeing you every week, Anita. We're so glad you're back. People yeah. message me and ask me where you're at when you're not here. Oh, great. <laughs> We've created our own little community. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for the next step? Yeah. Okay, give me just a second here. All right, eh? let me zoom back in here. Okay, so time for the next step. Oop. Oh, struggles. There we go. Okay, time for the next step. Let's put, let's put the tree on there. So we're going to, I'm going to start top right. It starts way up here at the top right, and it does not go into the water, right? So you have to visualize where it was such an easy, smooth transition, but you have to visualize where your water, uh, where your sky stops and your water begins, and don't take your branches down any further, okay? And it's interesting, if you look, Anita and I were just talking about brown and how weak the brown is. If you look at the original um, painting, the inspiration painting, if you look, you can look right through you can see that that's very transparent. I know it may be hard to see here, but the branch is really transparent it's because they've used that brown, that um, raw umber or burnt umber. So if you want to make it more solid, less transparent, you mix a little bit of black with it. So let's talk about how this is going to work. We're going to start here at the top right. And it's going to be thicker up here, so probably about as thick as my thumb, as wide as my thumb up here, and come down, and then it's going to fade into, into nothing. And with that first branch, I'm going to come almost all the way off the side of the canvas. So you can decide what, uh, what brush you're going to use. You can use your fine brush, your, your liner, one of your round brushes. I think I'm probably gonna use my filbert brush, but I'm gonna use it skinny ways, just knowing that as I go, I need to let off pressure so it just uh, fades into, into nothing. So let's start with just brown. Okay, not going into my water. 
starting up here at the top right. And I'm just gonna go. Whew. I might add a little bit of black to it. I think I want my branch a little darker. I'm gonna go brown and just a tiny, tiny bit of black. If I use too much black, I'll, uh, I'll lose the brown completely. So a tiny, tiny bit of black. And again, I want this to be a little about my thumb width up here. And then it's, it's gonna come down really uh, skinny as we go. So what I like to do is get a couple main branches with a bigger brush and then go to a smaller brush for little, uh, little offshoot branches. So there's that one. And put another decent sized one out here. And then another one I think that hangs down a little further. Okay. Again, you want it to be a little wider up here. And then get a little thinner as you go out. And this is actually, this is a really good way to practice your fine lines and your tree branches. Because we're going to cover it all in leaves. You're not going to see much of it at all once you're done. Okay. But I do need to put branches wherever I want uh, leaves to live. So if I want pretty color down in here, I'm going to have to put a branch down in there. And I think, I think that's where I'm going to stop with that brush. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush now. Go to my small round, some brown, a little bit of black. Branch there, a little twig there. All of my, um, all of my, my, my twigs off of my main branch, I start on my branch and I pull out and away. Start on my branch and pull out and away. Hmm. Am I, I think I might stop there. No, I feel like I might want one more, one more up here. Remembering to put branches every place I want color. Kind of like my skeleton, right? I have to put my skeleton on there first to give my leaves some place to live. And then I'm going to stop before I get too many. So it, it's interesting, the thing that you'll see me do and the thing that i see people do in the studio which gosh feels like forever since we've been at the studio i'll see people when they put branches on they want to go back and fix and fix and fix and then before they know it their branches have gotten really fat and really out of control this is where i like to point out there is nothing perfect about this i have some branches that i could go back and fix i'm not going to because the minute I try to go over them, I will never get that same shape again and my branch will get really fat and out of control. And if I get up nice and close and tight here, you can see 
how messy some of these are, right? This one isn't even hardly there connected to the tree. This one fades off into nothing, right? I could go back and try to quote fix these. Not going to. I'm going to leave them alone. Knowing that I'm putting leaves all over that dude. So he'll be fine. If you're having a hard time where um, your paint is, is breaking up like that, it's not, you're not getting the coverage that you'd like, um, you can thin your paint down just a little bit with a little bit of water, and that will help your paint go a little further. Not a lot though, just a tiny, tiny bit of water, and that'll help stretch it further on the canvas, and you'll be able to drag it further without it uh, breaking up. So we'll take a few more minutes, and I know that's probably gonna feel rushed, but I don't want you to stress about trees, right? We just have to get that skeleton on there so we can start laying some of that color on. So I said this early, um, earlier before we all got started. I think it's just when I had my early birds logged on. I don't have the September calendar chosen yet. So we'll paint every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Looking for ideas. Um, I really like the way this worked this time. I took all the ideas that people sent me. I took my like seven or eight favorites and put it out on Facebook and Instagram and had you guys all vote for the ones you wanted to do. So we're gonna do that again for September. Um, so spam me with your ideas. Send me whatever you got. And the ones that, um, the ones that I really like, I'll probably take the top eight or nine, put them out and have everybody vote. And then that'll be our September calendar. The one with the most votes is the first weekend and then the second weekend, third and fourth. So private message me or email me your ideas. Okay. I already have some pretty good ideas, but if I've learned anything by doing this, it's that I'm not always a real good judge of what other people want to paint. I was ready in August to start painting fall. And by voting, y'all told me you weren't ready yet. So that's what I know. Okay, so we'll take another couple minutes. And we're gonna start next, we're gonna start to get into the, into the reds. We're gonna lay those on first. Then a little orange, a little yellow. So a couple more minutes and we'll, uh, we'll move on into those colors, into those lovely fall colors. Okay, are you ready for color? I'm ready for color. Ready for all my lovely autumn colors. So let's talk a little bit about this. Think of, we're gonna put these on and they almost look like mustaches. If you squint your eyes and look, 
this is like a mustache shape here and there's a mustache shape here and another one up here so i love that the the leaves on this inspiration painting are in those clumps they're in those sections keep that in your mind as we paint them on there because it's a real challenge for some of us to get out of our perfectly spaced OCD brain and put things on there in chunks. At the same time, it's okay to have little leaves on there that don't even touch your branches. Like these up here, they're not even connected to branches. That's okay. You can, you can imagine, you can use your, use your imagination out there. They don't have to connect. That's all right. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, we wanna put the darkest color on first. And I think I'm gonna use red and maybe a little bit of brown uh, to keep, keep it nice and earthy, to keep it nice and dark. I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna identify where my mustaches are up here in my tree. And then I'm gonna put some down here in the water and some reflection. If you squint your eyes, look at where the reflection is. There's my diagonal of my puddles, my, um, my drops. And it kind of goes the other way and down. That's up to you if you do that. But that's what I notice when I see it. When I squint my eyes, I see the color runs this way. Up to you. Okay. So let's see, I'm gonna use my medium filbert brush, I think. I'm going to clean that out and dry it off. And this is one of those, um, are the leaves a reflection? Yes. It's a reflection and leaves that have fallen. So we'll do the reflection and then we'll lay some leaves on top of the reflection. I'll show you. So I'm gonna use my medium filbert brush. This is one of those times where you use that old, um, that old brush that's been all dried out, and splayed out with paint, you could use that. You could use the bundle of Q-tips like we've used before. Take um, like three, four, five Q-tips and bundle them all together and use those entirely up to you. If you use a brush like I'm using, I'm just gonna use my filbert brush. You might practice your brush stroke on your plate first. Your brush stroke, if you're using a brush, is gonna be in between a dot and a dash. It's gonna be a little bigger than just a dot, but not quite a dash. Let me, let me demonstrate. So I'm gonna use, I've got my silver, I'm gonna use red and a little bit of this brown just to earth it up a little bit, make it a little earthy. And I'm using brown, not black. If I use black, uh, you could use black if you want. The black would make it more, this is gonna make it like barn red. If you use black, it's gonna make it more maroon, more, more purpley. I'm, I'm going for earthy, so I'm going barn red. So I'm going red and brown. And your brush stroke wants to look like somewhere in between this and this. So a little more than a dot and a little less than that dash. Okay. And I'm gonna use a lot of paint here. So red and brown and let's identify where my mustaches are going to live i think i'm going to have one that lives here and maybe one that lives that goes out that way and let's see I'm gonna have one that lives, oh, kind of lives across here. There's not even like really a branch there, right? Yes, yes, I'm liking this. Get messy. 
Don't be afraid. So my, it's in between a dot and a dash. Here, maybe one here. So, right now, I'm just using red and a little bit of brown. Here. And I'm using a lot of paint. I am really, really loading that brush up. Put a mustache here. This is my reminder to you, too, to not, don't judge it. We have a tendency to, um, to feel like it's not right, right away. No, nope. don't judge it. Don't judge it halfway through the process. We wait and we do absolutely everything to it. And then we come back and see what we need to change. But we don't judge it yet. What a big mustache right across here that's not even on one branch. It's kind of going across all of them. Let's see. One, one down here. Oops. So remember to keep them in in defined clumps. Some of them touch the branch, some of them don't. That's okay. I'm gonna do a couple, couple that are kind of falling. A couple that extend out here a little bit. Now you'll notice I have not put anything in the water. I have the red and the brown on my brush. I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. And when I say wipe it off, I'm not gonna really wipe it off. I'm just gonna get rid of the big glob of paint that's on there. So I'm just gonna go whoop, whoop. So there's still paint on there, but there's not a big glob anymore. And I'm going to put a little reflection in the water, just a little bit. So with this brush that doesn't have hardly any paint on it at all, we talked about this color the, that goes down this way. So I'm going to do that. And because I'm in the water, I have to go side to side. So I'm barely touching. And I'm going side to side. I wish you were here with me because you could hear the sound my brush is making. It's very dry on the canvas. And then I might even get a little, just a little in those, um, in those drips. And then the question was asked, is that down there, is that reflection or is that actual leaves? It's both. So I have my reflection very side to side. I got a little in my puddles, in my, in my drips. Go back and load my brush up with red and brown. And I'm gonna put some leaves down there over those reflections. 
a couple. And then I'm going to call that red done. Ooh, look at those places where that red is popping. I use just straight red instead of uh, red and brown. I like that. I go and get some of that red in there. How are we doing? Are we all staying messy? Are we, uh, are we creating a messy train wreck here? Because that's kind of what mine looks like right now. And that's okay, because I know it's going to get better. We don't judge it halfway through. So I'm going to take that brush, pop it in my water cup, Give that a few minutes to dry. So when you're ready to move on to your next color, again, this doesn't have to be completely dry, but let's give it a few minutes to dry. Um, because if I try to put my next color on there, it's all gonna blend too much. And I don't necessarily want it to, I don't want the orange to blend with the red. I want it to um, be a separate color. Um, the paint that we're using is, the paint that I'm using anyway, is student grade paint. That means it's very transparent. So when I get ready to lay the orange on there, the orange might be too transparent for me. Keep that in mind. When you're ready to lay that orange on there, you might have to add a little bit of white. Okay. I'll try straight orange first, but I'm feeling like I'm probably gonna have to um, have to add a little bit of white to it to make it really pop and to make it less transparent. And as I'm looking at the picture, because I have my, my phone turned to uh, selfie so I can see. As I'm looking at it, I feel like I want one more clump of leaves right up there. I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clean out. At this point, you might decide you want to go get clean water. I think I'm good. I think I'm just going to keep on moving. I'm going to take orange. I'm going to start with just straight orange. I might add a little white to it, but let's do straight orange first to see how we feel. And remember, we're going to put it on the red, but we want to leave a little bit of the red show underneath. We don't want to completely erase the red. We want to stay on that mustache, leaving a little bit of the red reveal down below. So let's start with a big old glob of orange. Oh, if your red is still really, really wet, you can start with the orange, but if you feel like you're losing the orange, you might go to the blow dryer. Mine, um, mine is pretty, pretty dry, but I have um, little blobs of, of wet red, so I'm not too concerned. Um, but yeah, dig in, and if, it's, if you're losing your orange completely, go to the blow dryer for a minute. Okay, so I'm using straight orange. I'm gonna get nice and close. I'm leaving the red show down here and I'm adding that little bit of orange 
on top. Now this is just straight orange because then I'm gonna lay yellow on top of that. I might decide, you can see right there in the gray where I put the orange on, it looks kind of poopy right there. What if I add a little bit of white to my orange? Just a tiny bit. See what that does for me. Well, that's fun. That's a little better. It's, it's so subtle and I'm sure it's probably hard for you to see, but a little bit of white in that orange, I like it. So I'm gonna go back over every single one of those mustaches with orange, tiny bit of white. Leaving some of the red show below. Oh, I'm already loving this. This is one of those paintings, the messier you get with it, the better, I think. You gotta, you gotta let yourself go. You gotta be free. And I know for some of us that's hard to do, but it really is better if you could just let it, let it go, let it be whatever it's gonna be. So we're gonna do that with the orange and the, oh my gosh, we have a gorgeous sunset right now. If you're in central Ohio, take a look outside because it is spectacular. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> squirrel, little, little uh, ADD there. Um, sorry about that. So we're gonna get the orange on top of all of our mustaches, leaving that little bit of red show underneath. We're gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm gonna shush a little bit of orange in there. I might cover up some of the red, some of my red leaves. Smear them a little, that's okay. Put a little bit of the orange, ooh, there in, the, in those puddles and those drips. Oh, a picture of the sunset because it's gorgeous, right? The beautiful sunset. It's one of those things people, people ask me, I took a picture of the sunset. Um, I think it was last night and I posted up on my personal Facebook and somebody commented, Ooh, we need to paint that. It's one of those things. Sunset sunsets are really tricky to paint to get that color. Cause there is a color happening out there right now that I don't know how we go about getting it on a canvas. Um, there are a few times in life where you just can't recreate that picture. The actual photo is so much better than what we could create here. And you just kind of have to accept that, right? They have been beautiful this week, haven't they, Jessica and Kelly? We've had some pretty great sunsets. Um, we have a local, um, a local business in uh, in Union County, I think they're Marysville, I'm not real sure, but they're in the country, uh, French Hen Farm. And if you follow them on, pace, on Facebook, it's a place where um, they do weddings and they, in their barn, it's like an event center. They have big, big formal events sometimes, but they have been posting, this pandemic has been awful for all of us, but at least we've been granted with gorgeous sunsets. So every, every day, every other day or so, they post from their barn, their, their gorgeous sunsets that they're having. And they're right. <laughs> In Tennessee, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're getting Laura's leftovers. It took me a minute to, to figure out what you were saying. We got, uh, we got some storms and it's because that front was being, the front from Laura was being pushed up this way. So we've had thunderstorms the last couple days, but nothing like I'm sure you guys are getting. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with my mustaches here. Some orange, a little bit of white. Ooh, 
that one has a little more white than the others. I'm okay with that. That goes back to what I said earlier. We can't always control what happens. Okay, for me, I can rarely control what happens, but that's part of being an artist is letting whatever happens on here, let it happen. Don't try to control it. Just let it be what it's gonna be. Right, I got that, I got what I perceived as too much orange on there. And you heard what I said. Ooh, there we go. Because <laughs> what it is. Oh, so um, while everybody's just a painting away, my reminder to you that there will come a time that I'll call this painting done. And uh, you'll have an hour to either email me or um, Facebook private message the studio a picture of you, I love to see your faces, a picture of you uh, with your painting. And then at the end of that hour, I'll take everything, collage it together and put it up on social media, uh, Crooked Door Studio, Facebook and Instagram. Um, because if we were at the studio, we would have a group picture, but because of what's going on right now, we can't do a group picture, so that's our group picture. No, so, an hour after class is over, you'll have to get me um to get me your picture and anita i saw where yours wasn't included that last week and that's because i didn't have it within the hour so i'll watch for yours to come through okay so don't forget i've got my orange on all my mustaches i shushed a little bit of orange down there in the bottom and now I want to get a couple little, little orange leaves down in here. So we're looking for mustache, swoosh, drop, leaves. Mustache, swoosh drops, leaves. Because we're gonna get ready and move on to um, yellow next. Leaving that red and that orange and lay that yellow right on top for that highlight. Uh, yellow is the same as the orange, very transparent. You're gonna have to add white to it, a little bit of white. Oh my gosh, the sunset gets better and better. You know what? I'm going to take you guys out. Let's let's go. Let's go check out the sunset. Let me flip my flip this around. I think you all deserve a, a lovely sunset tonight while you're painting your trees. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And even looking at step outside oh oh uh, there's your sunset for the evening and looking at the picture on my phone and looking at the sunset beyond my phone just doesn't capture how beautiful that is i mean it's it's gorgeous but there's a color in there that you just can't capture anyway Oh, this is my reminder to you tonight to breathe. It's all okay. The world's going to be what it's going to be. It is very Hawaiian tonight, isn't it, Leon? Yes. I love to look at sunsets and look at the skies and look at those brush strokes. Hmm. You can see taking your brush right up there and doing those crisscross brush strokes. Mm. And then look at that little cloud right there just to hanging out. So good. And even as you look on around this way, it's beautiful. <sighs> okay. 
you know, when I remind you guys to breathe, it's because um, I'm reminding myself to breathe. So that was it. That was our, that was our breather we needed tonight. Hmm. Okay. Give me just a minute. I'm going to head back in. Okay. Oh, there's my kitchen. Sorry about that. Flip my, flip my camera around. There we go. <laughs> oh, this is why Bob Ross had a whole camera crew with him. Right. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's funny going outside and coming back in. I, I looked at my painting and I was like, Oh, those colors make me happy but I think I might need to fix some of my mustaches. I just realized my mustaches up here are, uh, they're leaning this way. I kind of want to flatten them out a little bit. I can do that with the yellow. So I'm going to get ready to lay my yellow on top. So I'm going to clean that brush out. Take that filbert, clean him out really good. I'm getting judged by my bulldog right now. I just looked over and she's, she's looking at me like you were outside and did not take me with you. She looks very put out by the whole situation. Okay, so I have my brush cleaned out, dry it off. And the yellow, I'm like the orange, I tried just straight orange first. The yellow, I know I'm gonna have to add white to it. So same rule applies. If it's really, really wet, you're gonna have a hard time getting that really bright yellow pop. Give it a try, but if it starts to all blend and blur and you're losing your yellow, go to the blow dryer. So mustaches first. So I'm gonna go to mustache. Then reflection then drops, then leaves. And I want my yellow to be right on top, oh yeah, right on top of that orange. I don't wanna lose it completely. And you'll see as I do this, it's okay for some of those yellows to fall down in, in the orange red a little, that's okay. But our goal is to get that lovely highlight. Some of them fall down in. You know, I kind of like that I'm getting that little bit of, of blend because my orange is still a little wet because I can always go back again and lay a little more clean yellow white on top. So I think I'm okay that I'm getting a little bit of a blend. I don't want a lot of blend, not too much. But a little bit's okay. And remember, our goal here is to keep that yellow on top for highlight. So you're keeping the red under, the orange in the middle, and the yellow on top.
Okay, Marie, regarding your private message, that is absolutely freaking adorable. Adorable. Um, practice on a plate, right? Practice on a plate or a paper to get the feel for it and have a damp paper towel ready that if it all goes sideways, you can wipe it off real fast before it dries. That's my, that's my guidance to you. Oh. Guys, I love this. Ooh, those colors. Ooh. I'm so happy you guys come and paint with me every week. This makes my heart happy. This is a bright spot in this, in this whole weird pandemic thing. So thank you. Thank you to everyone that shows up to paint with me. I appreciate that. So I'm getting my, my yellow and white on there. More yellow, just a little bit of white. And I love that it's mixing with a little bit of that wet orange. because then I can go back with yellow and a little more white and get a couple nice little highlights in places. Some real bright, bright yellow little blocks in there. Some real bright, bright pops of light. Oh, and then wipe my brush off. Side to side down here. Little in the, oh, little in the drips. And then leaves, leaves in the water. Mm. Oh, I need a couple, couple yellow fallen leaves there. Forgot to get some that were falling down. There you go. Ooh, that's busy. I like it. I feel like I could take a couple of these mustaches and, and put them together into, into bigger mustachy blobs. I feel like I have too many mustaches over here. Ah, oh, it's all about learning, right? Learning as we go, modifying. But I think I think there I'm going to stop because I could I could just keep going, but I think I'm going to stop. And we've come down to um, not one more thing, two more things, because the second thing is design our painting. Um, but before we do that, I want to take my, um, my little brush with a little bit of white, and I want to accentuate those, those little drip puddles just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to do that. A little brush, clean it out. A little tiny, tiny bit of white. I've got my pointy brush with a tiny bit of white. And I want to accentuate those puddles just a little. A little swoosh there. A little there. This is one of those really um, 
subtle final details that the painting's fine without it, but the minute you add that, it really, look at the difference between number one, number two, and then number three that doesn't have that. It's, it's so subtle, but it would be missing without it. There we go. And just like that, I do believe I'm done. So I am going to go on and sign it. As a reminder, um, please sign your paintings. I know there are people that don't like to sign them. Even if you don't want to sign the front, make sure you sign it at least on the back. If you're going to sign it on the back with a marker, sign here, never ever here. It could bleed through if you sign it here, but here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and sign mine. So I have my trusty paint pen. Sign mine, and then I will um, unmute everyone, give you the opportunity to chat. So let's see, S, S, blah, 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 20. Okay, there we go. Signed, done. So I am going to, let's call this painting done at, I know it's not 845 yet, but let's call it done at 845. Um, that gives you until 945 Ohio time to private message. Um, let's just go till 10. That gives you till 10. That's easier to remember. 10 p.m. By 10 p.m. send me your, uh, your painting, a picture of yourself with your painting, and I'm going to stop the recording now and go on and give you all the opportunity to unmute yourselves and chat a little bit. So as I end the recording session of tonight, thank you all so much for, for joining us. Um, this has been great, and we'll do it all again next week, okay? So let me stop this. Stop. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh. Oh, oh I have a fly. Fly is going to make me crazy. Oh. There we go. All right. So you should be able to unmute yourself if you want to. Um, I'm looking over at my laptop. I would love to see some of your paintings. How, how'd they go, Anita? Can I see? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Do you have, do you have your yellow on there yet? No, I'm going to still put it. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. That looks great. Oh, oh. 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 oh no, we're getting feedback. Oh yes. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. <laughs> that makes my heart happy. Let me see, Teresa. Oh. <laughs> yes. Gorgeous. My Lori. I'm not going to show it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so happy. Sure, now, do you do Bob Ross as well? Um, I do when the studio's open. Um, I can't call it Bob Ross. But when the studio opens, um, I'll be able to do oil painting with Shauna Sue. Um, can't call it Bob Ross for copyright reasons. And I'm not going to do Bob Ross here because um, Bob painted in oil. And really the only way to get the look of some of the things he does is to paint in oil. And I don't want to paint with oil in my in my house. So when I get back to the studio, when things get a little closer to some kind of normal, um, I'll I'll do a couple Bob Ross classes and I'll do them via Zoom as well. Oh, great, because I don't, I'm too far from you. Right, right. But even when I get back into the studio, I will continue to uh, do these via Zoom. Oh, great. That's great. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Actually, this, this pandemic has taught me that I can paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we all can. We just have to get past that idea that we can't 
and your creativity looks different than my creativity yeah. and that's okay but we all have it it just looks different in all of us that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness okay you bring, well, I you bring a lot of cheer to us Shana. oh thank you hi tani hi honey i thought i saw you log on i see your yeah, face I'm here. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You know, every time I see a, uh, I see my sunrise when I'm on my morning run, I get a little weepy because of your comment. Aww. It's a good weepy. So I have um, a little bit of news. It's kind of a, a surprise for some people. But I'm taking my very first plane ride next week. And? <laughs> And we'll be, we will, us three will be in Marysville on Wednesday. This coming just Wednesday? For, yeah, but just for Wednesday and Thursday. Where are you going to be? <laughs> uh, probably Angie's house, but I mean, we're going to have Jessica with us. You know, we're going there to visit Jessica and then stop at like friends' houses or hang out in town or whatever. I want to see, we want to see you. I want to see you. I need a COVID hug. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rick's sitting here with me. He's doing his cards. Hi, honey. Hi. Bubby's eating hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I hear you right? You've never been on an airplane? Yeah, I've never been on an airplane. It'll be Bubby's first time, too. We had to talk her into it. Yeah, they had to talk me into it because I get anxious just thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I don't fly well. I don't fly well at all. I need my own uh, brake pedal. <laughs> like like yeah. I could push through the, through the floor of the plane if I'm not careful. So I, I always take um, like Dramamine because it makes me sleepy. And yeah. it chills me out just a little bit. Or... Um, yeah. A Xanax, if you have it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna take two Benadryl and a and one Dramamine. Okay. Oh, Lynn just said Ativan. Oh, I wish I would Lynn just said Ativan. Yeah, I, you, yeah. I don't, I don't fly well either. I, I feel you there, but you know, when you got to get someplace fast. Yeah. Oh, Bill's a pilot. Talk to us, Bill. Tell me why I can't have my own brake pedal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most original question. <laughs> okay, so my little my little story is my husband and I, it's been probably five or so years ago, we went to Cuba and it was spectacular and it was a short flight from Miami to Cuba and it was I don't know, it was like a half an hour. It was really fast. It's one of those, by the time you get up in the air, you're ready to come back down. And when we were flying over, we were flying there with Cubans that were taking stuff home and you can't, oh, is that my problem? I sit, I sit midway, I sit over the wing. I should be sitting up closer is what I'm hearing, closer to the pilot. So when we were leaving, my carry-on was like a suitcase with clothing. The Cubans that we were flying back with, their carry-ons were automobile tires and flat screen TVs and things that you can't get in Cuba. And as I'm looking out the window and we're on the tarmac and they're loading all the stuff on the plane, they kept bringing more stuff and more stuff and more stuff. That plane had to be way overweight. They were weighing us before we got on the plane. And I had some some random person's bag in between my feet and they couldn't get any more stuff in the overhead. And I kid you not, when that plane took off, you, when it finally got off the runway, you could hear it heave. Like it went, huh, uh, and I, I can't make this up. People clapped. And all I could think was, oh my God, we're going to have to land. And when we land, this plane is this plane is so far overweight. This is there's not going to be enough runway. This is not going to end well. So that whole 30, 45 minutes, I forget however long it was, 
it's clinched. And I probably shouldn't be saying any of this because Tawny's getting ready to fly. Sorry, honey. It'll be fine. You're not going to Cuba. It'll be fine. Yeah, the, the flying, the flying will be fine. You know, sitting right up front in the cockpit, and I would have Teresa sitting right seat, so she'd be right beside of me, right in front of the control yokes. And I was, uh, I got her a right seat handbook in case something ever happened to me that she would know what to do in an emergency. No, you. Bill, you're not allowed to say that. If something happens to you, you're not allowed to say that when you're the pilot. Read it. <laughs> I was, in a single engine airplane, when I was a student pilot, I had an engine failure. Oh no, no, no. And I, and I landed the plane safely. It glided right down to the highway and I landed safely. Oh God. I flew with him, my door oh. flew open. And I was like, ah! We're in a single oh, engine. God. <laughs> No, have we have we mentioned that I don't fly well? <laughs> she doesn't either, I but I did it, but I didn't really like it. I don't like to fly either. But I love it. I'll fly into the cloud. I can I'm instrument rated so I can fly into the clouds and into the weather and stuff and I'll get up nope. there and fly. Nope. That's why I didn't read the book. So, I'm like, if you're going down, I'm going down. So you know it's <laughs> come coming out of us into Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, shot uh, an instrument approach and cleared the clouds and her brother uh, got his pilot's license later than I did and so he was my uh, second in command and so he took the visual and I kept my head on the instruments and I flew the approach right down to the runway and landed it. You didn't oh even God. know we even touched down. It was so smooth. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually like having heart palpitations hearing this. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. You you know what's funny though that that's your gig. I love that that you love that. The way you talk about that is the way I talk about being on the water. My husband and I went uh, we went whale watching a couple years ago and it was real choppy out on the ocean mm -hmm. and there were people hanging on for dear life thinking we weren't going to make it back. And I was out on the bow of the boat. I was like, if this is how I go, this is how I go. That's how I feel about the cruise ship. We were on a cruise last October and leaving Florida. Yeah. We a steep pitch up and then a pitch down and the steep pitch up and pitch down. I was like, oh, that's just turbulence. This does not bother me. This is no problem. <laughs> we were supposed to have gone at the end of July again. And... Dang, Corona. Oh, uh, damn, Rona. Yeah. Uh, she messes up everything. She does. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you guys are back tonight. That makes my heart happy. Well, we've been missing because Nathan's been bowling with professional bowlers, so he's uh, he's quite gr he's quite good. So, cool. That's cool. Oh, uh, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and end. Tawny, sister, your your flight will be fine, right? It'll be magnificent. Okay, and let me know. I will come to you Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Let me know where you're at. Okay, Kay? I will message you. Okay, yeah. Because I will bring Doc with me because he's a much better hugger than I am anyway. Oh, uh, yes, we, we miss both of you so much. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, I know, me too. It'll be, it'll be good, honey. It'll be good. I like the, I like the Benadryl Dramamine idea. That's, that's a really good idea. Because if you yeah. can't con control what's happening around you, you just sleep right through it. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. Hopefully, I'll see you. All right. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Bye. All right, everybody. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and log off for the evening. Oh, Stacy, I saw your comment. Because um, you're in Marion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was born and raised in Marion. Um, so yes. my maiden um, hair. It, Shana, is your mother Lila? Was your mother Lila? What? Yeah. Yeah. Lila was mom. Okay. That she is my first cousin. I am what? David's daughter, Judy. Judy. What's your last name, Judy? Burkhart. Now it was Johnson, but it's Burkhart. Johnson. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mom's mom's been gone almost 12 years she was what 60 uh, when she 59. passed 59 when she passed yeah and yeah. that was in the fall wasn't it 
September 1st, she passed on Labor Day, um, nine, nine, no, 2008. Yeah. Okay, and her birthday was January 11th. Yep. Yeah. Right. She yeah. was she was convinced she wasn't going to make it to 60 and she didn't really. And she she died in an accident. So she wasn't sick. She was healthy as a horse, healthier than dad. <laughs> it was a brain aneurysm, wasn't it? You know, they thought it was and it, it wasn't. It was just an accident. She fell. Really? Yeah. She fell down. Um, yeah, she and basement. dad, they were carrying stuff in and out of the, in and out of the house. Cause they were working on the basement and he was, because his knee, you know, dad's overweight and his knees are real yeah. bad. And he was setting stuff on the landing and she was picking stuff up off the landing, their um, construction materials and carrying them up and down the basement steps. And it was like 10 minutes and she hadn't come back to get more stuff. And he went and checked on her. And the nearest they can tell is she, she fell from the top step and landed on the basement floor. And that was it. They thought it was an aneurysm because there was, um, there was so much blood. Oh. But yeah. It was, it's one of those freak, weird freak things. Yeah. How, but, how's your dad doing now? He's good. He's, uh, he's dad. <laughs> he's a home okay. he's a homebody. He's happy being a homebody. So every now yeah. and then I'll check on him and take him groceries. <laughs> well, how's Sky doing? He's good. He's uh he's working at Honda. Um good. I don't even know how long he's been there. Fifteen years maybe. Yeah, still not married, no kids. <laughs> Just being guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, well, you guys have this laugh. Yes, good to catch up with you. No, we, we don't have much family. Well, I don't have much family, so. Stormy's the only one that's left. Stormy, yeah. 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 Um, well, James, but we yeah. all called him Stormy. Yeah. Stormy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody's gone. Um, Sue's girls. Um, Aaron and Beth, they both live in Texas. Really? Yeah. And they have, they all have their families now. Aaron has two girls and Beth has a little boy. Oh. So they're, yeah, they're all doing well. How's I'll, their dad probably, doing? Yeah, pro, when Rona's over, I'll probably go down and, and see them. Cause yeah, well. as far as, uh, as far as family, as far as cousins, they're, they're it. How's Martin doing? He's good. He's good. He's uh, he's still in Marion with Linda. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're I think good. They, I think they're in Pleasant District. They are. Yeah. yeah. They actually live right behind uh, the schools. They live on Smelter. If you look mm -hmm. out their backyard, you overlook as one of the ball fields or something, I forget. But you can see the school from there, uh, okay. from their back. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad everybody's doing well. Yeah. yeah. And you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Living the dream. Painting in my kitchen. Life is always good. <laughs> you know, I never, I kept thinking your red hair looked like Lila's and your mm -hmm. forehead. And mm -hmm. then when, she, when Stacy said Shauna Sue, or you did, somebody did. And it's like, oh my God, that has to be her. Yeah. 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 And it's funny. I look in the mirror every now and then I'm like, Oh my God, I am more and more my mom. Yes, you are. <laughs> I mean, I take my glasses off and I am, I am Lila. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh shoot. 12 oh, years fun. she's been gone. I didn't realize it had been that long. Yeah. Well, in September 1st will be 12 years. Yeah. Just, just as surreal today as it was then, you know. Oh, it, it doesn't go away. No. It doesn't go away. No. So. But I still have dad, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thankful for that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off tonight. It was lovely okay. to talk to you. It was lovely. And, well, did you paint tonight? Miss you. You're going to miss no. me. I watched no, Stacey paint. Okay, no. maybe next time you'll paint with us. I'm not a painter. 
<laughs> we have fun, right? We fling paint, right, Stacy? It's all good. We do. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We are going to miss you, Shona. What's happening? Yeah, but we're going to miss you once you log off. I oh. enjoyed the chat. <laughs> I know. I looked over and I see. I see people are still on here tonight. Yeah, oh. it's so nice to chat with you or listening to you. <laughs> well, it's nice to talk to you too, Anita. But I think I'm going to go outside and enjoy some of this uh, some of this lovely fall weather we're having. I have a question. Did you check up with the art of living? I no, didn't. I, I didn't. I have it on my list, but I have not yet. You know, please do check. It will help because I try to do it. It sort of increases uh, oxygen and gives some yeah. heat, you know, and then the sleep is a lot. Plus you feel more yeah. active every day. Good. Yeah, I've saved the email. I'll, I'll check into it sometime. And in case you have any questions, let me know, huh? Thank you, Anita. You're welcome. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and log off tonight. It was lovely to see everyone, and I will see y'all. Oh, don't forget to send me ideas, because again, I don't have the September calendar chosen yet. So send me your ideas, and then we'll get to, we'll get to start voting tomorrow. So I'll see everybody next week.